Alfred Nobel made his money inventing and perfecting dynamite. His final will provided funds and instructions on what became the Nobel Prize. Today on In the Library, a look at Burton Feldman's history of the prize called the Nobel Prize. The Peace Prize is the, probably the most popularly known, but there are prizes in literature, various sciences, and as of the late 1960s, economics. Burton goes through all the ins and outs of each of these, discussing the winners in each category, along with the controversies, and there are many that surround the granting of the prize. First, though, after a brief biography of the man himself and his somewhat confusing will that grants the prizes, Feldman talks about who is in control of them. In the end, the Swedish Academy, located in Stockholm, decides on all the prizes except for the Peace Prize, which is under the auspices of the Sorting, or Norwegian Parliament. Why is this, you may ask? because at the time of the founding of the prizes, Norway was part of Sweden, but it was allowed its own parliament for internal affairs. When Norway eventually became independent, it took the Peace Prize, which is awarded in Oslo, with it. This is just one of the many behind the scenes tidbits Feldman lets us in on. Feldman then goes on to explain the rules of the prizes. According to this book, the rules are many, and some of them don't make a lot of sense. For example, no posthumous prizes. You must be alive to win. You must also attend the ceremony to get the money. If you don't, you forfeit the funds, but you still receive your diploma and medal. This happened several times during World War II and the Cold War, mostly with German, Austrian, and Russian war laureates. Speaking of laureates, all past winners are eligible to nominate. And finally, the Peace Prize is determined by a five-member committee chosen from the sitting members of Norway's parliament. With that, the rest of the chapters are devoted to the history and winners of each category of prize. Literature, the science prizes, physics, chemistry, and physiology or medicine, the peace prize, and the economics memorial prize. One of the things I like about this section is Feldman doesn't take a lot of time on biographical sketches of the winners but focuses on the winning work itself. This is very much in keeping with the spirit of the prize. Fun fact, Freud was nominated several times in the medicine category, and Gandhi was nominated for a peace prize. Neither one of these gentlemen won. While I was most interested in the chapters on the science prizes, the chapter on the economic prize was interesting. First, it's the newest, but started only in 1968. And second, while funded by Nobel accounts, its official name is the Central Bank of Sweden Prize of Economic Sciences in memory of Alfred Nobel. Some say that the prize should be eliminated, or at least be completely separated from the other prizes with no connection to a Nobel at all. But for now, it remains. Feldman doesn't make a judgment on this. He just reports the information. Hey everyone, if you want to get behind the scenes at In the Library, if you want early access, take a look at our Patreon, patreon.com slash in the library bg. The book ends with lists of all the winners in every category from 1901, when the prize started, to 2000, the year the book was published. This is a very useful tool and a great addition to the back of the book. 
I'm just scratching the surface of what I learned from this book. There's a great history of the most enduring of intellectual and academic prizes, full of controversy, wacky characters, and deep thinkers. In the frame of the Nobel Prize, this book is also an excellent world history of the 20th century. That's all for this week. Please take a look here for my book review playlist. Thank you for watching, and as always, please keep on reading. We'll see you next time.